first century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside Yeah, I am the 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Come, come Come on, everyone, let's celebrate. We are the children of the sun. I can see you when I look into your eyes. We are the same, and we are light, and we are one. Hear now, hear my ancient prayer and sing along. We are awakening as one. And we can make difference yeah we can be the change it takes to make the world a lot more fun well if you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are oh now child please don't frown you can choose a new vibration and these words can take you far First century superhuman and I know that the answers are inside. And today I have with me Jan Salerno. Jan, how are you today? Oh, aloha. Blessed day. I'm feeling wonderful. It's a beautiful you morning. Are, you are beautiful. It's so great to see your shining face. And um Let's visit for a few minutes about the background of how we know each other and how you got into living this magical life that includes dolphins. Um, <laughs> just to start out and present our show, I'm Carrie Kirstar Ellis, author of the 21st Century Superhuman Book Series, which are guidebooks for our times. And we are just so excited that we're in these times of great change. And so many people are waking up to become who they truly are, who they came to earth to be. And Jan, you're really an example of that for me. Um, I love your radiance and your radiance can only come because you've followed your heart. And why don't you tell us a little bit about how that's evolved for you? Mm. Well, I grew up in uh, Southern California and was always a um, totally enchanted by the ocean, passionate about the ocean. Mom, take me to the beach. Take me to the beach. Dad moved to Hawaii. He was a pilot for United. I didn't wow. understand the uh, seniority issues, but dad, let's move. Let's go, 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 go. And um, I started diving um, when I was 12, scuba diving. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. I didn't know that. In 1968. And um, wow. I had saved my money and had to continue to wait till I was old enough and uh, had the opportunity to uh, work on and off on a dive boat out of San Pedro. My dear mother would drive me down there, you know, as a kid. Wow. So... I had a marine biology background and was going to go to uh, a university, you know, and do something in, in that field. At that time, I found that uh, the oil companies were the ones who were hiring, hiring marine biologists. I had a, a lot of uh, pre-college credits before college. And then many things happened. I had a four-year scholarship to UCLA, and I did a major left turn into my artwork. Nice, nice, and, uh, nice, nice. Didn't have a scuba buddy at that point and um, had um, great successes in getting my artwork out there and supporting bands in the 70s into the 80s. Nice. And in the meantime, spent a lot of time in Malibu, and I would be swimming with those dolphins out there. Wow. And um, had some very interesting experiences around those dolphins. And then um, uh, there was a stranding, and um, I was part of helping get started the, the Delphus Project. This is in the 70s. Mm. And then this is when Marine Land was happening, so that there, uh, there would be a place to take a stranded animal at that point. So this, Marine, a, Marine Land in Florida? Is no, that Marine thinking? Land in San Pe uh, uh, 
um, San Diego or Palos Verde, Palos Verde. Uh -huh. Peninsula. So there's a long arc to this, decades and decades and decades wow. of this. Uh, and so then in uh, in the early 80s, I got to uh, sail the uh, Hawaiian Islands working on a, a dolphin book illustration. And, wow. Uh, who was that, that was, for? That was for Ralph Blum, the gentleman who wrote Book of Runes. So I had done wow. his illustrations. And uh, we had self-published, or he self-published, and then we got with St. Martin's Press. Oh, my so gosh. So there was a lot of momentum, and, and Ralph had a lot of energy around. So this was 80, uh, 83. Yeah. And then wow. um, by 85, I had my daughter. And I, uh, oh, when she was in utero, uh, yeah. I was living in the South Bay, and when I and she was in utero, I would go in the water, and the dolphins would come up around me. That's so incredible. Yeah, and so would they sound off of you or yeah, sonar yeah. you because they yeah. knew you had a baby in your tongue? It was crazy. I would be driving along the coast there in the South Bay, and would if I saw the dolphins, I would stop everything that I was doing, and you know, usually had my bathing suit on, you know, so I could get out there and just have a wow. contact. I didn't realize how driven I was. Um, then I did another sail. I wound up uh, around the islands. I wound up um, at Dolphins Plus and Dolphin Research Center with a group of gals in about 86 and had tremendous experience down there swimming with those dolphins. And one of the gals who I was with, Deb Brown, was a uh, worked for a um, holistic vet and she was an animal communicator mm. and she, we went through that whole week was learning how to communicate with the animals in that way so that was a big opening that's amazing really so that was really the beginning I think of, of I'm not sure if the word is being more serious about it but in a in a very expansive way I had a an experience. I was always so passionate to go. I just wanted more and more and more to be with the dolphins. But then I had this experience where at Dolphins Plus, where I realized, what am I really searching for here? Because I had the dolphins there might take your leg or your arm into their mouth like this. And there was a moment of my thought that was going around. I was swimming with one dolphin and there was a, he went like that. And I wound up with scratches across the Two sides of my leg. It was quite a wonderful tattoo for a while. Was he kind of claiming you? Yes. As so, a playmate or friend? Yeah, or, yeah, exactly. There was a claim, and I, I felt that I needed to really do some internal work about if I get myself into being with them to be very clear about what I'm doing and to be very focused. Yes. So that was a, a great, you know, exercise. And that, that was it. Um, can Dolphins you remember Plus. Dolphins Plus in Florida? Yeah. So uh, let's segue from that into, I, I have chills just running through me the whole time you're telling your story, because obviously you started out so young that you really, this was a, a mission, a purpose, a self, you know, a soul driven um, thing for you. And so beautiful, How, your story. Wow, I'm just really blown away. Well, mm -hmm. around 19, I was putting Tony Robbins on stage in the mid 80s. And um, we were, I was part of this big, you know, international community that were doing that. But we were some of the top promoters of him in the country. And we did firewalks in the Midwest. But when we first did our firewalk, we went to New York City and firewalk there. And then a friend who had invited us to that called us up and said, oh my God, I'm with the dolphins down in Florida. You have to come down here. And that was probably about 1983. And once we swam with the dolphins, we were really hooked. And <laughs> we ended up going through the keys to all of the different facilities. And we just said, we've got to start a dolphin program. So not only were we promoting the Tony Robbins events, then we started this program called Dolphin Camp. And we really advertised in some big magazines. We had people come from all over the world and the country and 
Um, and we'd have, we do it for several months in the summer and we do it at the different dolphin facilities. Plus back then there was, um, Ron Canning was who I know, you know, the background of had the Patty C sailboat. And he was the first person who was going out with dolphins in the keys. And he had befriended this pod and his, his sister had been killed in a bicycle accident. And thus his boat was named the Patty C after her. And he was sort of recovering his soul. And so he was just out with the dolphins every day. And we started getting on his boat and going out with him in those really early days before there were too many people down there. And he was always really careful to follow the pod and see what they were doing, not interfere with their life. You know, if they were feeding, he would allow them to feed. And we learned that from him. We learned to just be with the dolphins, but to also honor them and their presence and their, um, you know, whatever they were doing that day. And then when they would start to play, that was when we'd get in the water. And we, we would set our, our groups up as pods. So I would bring maybe six people, that pod of people to the boat that day. And the other pods would go to other facilities. And um, okay. yeah. And Ron would always say to me, Oh, Carrie, you dive in there. You're comfortable and they know you and they like you. And so I was always the example with the wild dolphins, which was fabulous. And um, they would do things like, bring us a sand dollar on their tail or, um, and he had a, he had a tow, uh, a board that was cut kind of like this with a curve. And so you'd hold on to the top of it. Um, actually I think it went the other way with a curve in the front, you'd hold on to it and it was on a tow rope and he'd tow me and the dolphins would just swim along beside me. <laughs> it was so much fun. And, um, and I remember one time we had, it was really dead still, you know, not a wave, not a wind. And so we were all kind of in the water playing. And um, two of the guys were playing catch with a snorkel. And a dolphin came up between them and threw them a ball of seaweed as if to say, come on, play with us. This is what we play with. Yeah. And um, oh my God. so, you know, just I'm sure you have just a whole list of beautiful experiences. But these beautiful experiences stay with us. And then the things I learned from some of John Lilly's work, and um, I know Harmony was involved with that, who's a mutual friend of ours. And um, she swam, she worked with John Lilly, and then she swam with the dolphins in Hawaii for a long time. But some of what I learned was that dolphins operate in all brainwave frequencies at the same time, beta, alpha, delta, theta, and um, that one of our big attractions to dolphins is that they, by being with them, they are entraining us to enter a more open brainwave capacity, yeah. which is what happens to us when we're channeling, when we're having a heightened experience, we're in multiple brainwave frequencies and even gamma, which is sort of a really more expansive brainwave frequency. But um, that, you know, I mean, first of all, I've had this really amazing life too. We healed my broken arm with Dr. John Ray's body electronics point holding in a matter of three hours around 1981. And you could hear bones click back into place. I've never had any problem with the arm. It was x-rayed. Doctors wanted to do surgery and put two pins in. And then we went from that to fire walking and breaking boards with our bare hands. And then we went into the swimming with dolphins. So living in these different expanded brainwave states that allowed for our heightened sensitivities, our heightened abilities really changed my life forever. As I'm sure your experience, I mean, you're, you're not even a normal human. I mean, I would say you're like, you're a normal human, you know? And, um, and so we've had kind of, I'd say yours is much more um, in depth because you started so young and did it so much, but we did that for about 12 years and mostly just um, certain months out of the year we would do it. So we weren't there all the time, but um, we had somebody come to our dolphin camp. This woman had dragged her husband along. He had been sexually abused as a child. And so he rarely ever 
um, he couldn't sleep at night. If somebody touched him, he would wake up. And after he swam with the dolphins, he had, he slept all night and came and just told that to the rest of the group, you know, and it was amazing. And we had an elderly gentleman who had shrapnel in his back from World War II. And the dolphins came and when he was in the water, they'd come up and they'd go, zzz, 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 zzz. <laughs> what is that in your back? You know, because <laughs> they, yeah. they could tell he wasn't made internally because their sonar is kind of like, like x-rays almost. They can read what the inside and like you have going in when you were pregnant with your daughter and what that must have done to activate her, how beautiful that was. Um, so anyway, that's kind of a sidetrack, sort of a parallel life kind of thing in different mm -hmm capacities in different ways. But I think both of us have lived kind of extraordinary lives of following our hearts, following our dreams, um, whatever those have been. And we actually ended up meeting in Pagosa Springs, Colorado. I lived there for 17 years. I don't think you were there quite as long, but it was like a gathering place for a whole group of souls who I think were activated and initiated in our lives there. And I remember somebody saying to me there, what's a dolphin girl doing here in the mountains, you know, but totally. um, the, the mountains had something for us too. So what took you from California to the mountains of Colorado? Well, I was wanting to move to Hawaii. I had, uh, my daughter was eight and my husband wanted to do the mountains. And I had already, you know, had a deep love for Colorado but I wanted to move to Hawaii and I had been trying to get the relationships to move to Hawaii my whole life. Anyway. So we, we did the motor home <laughs> and we <laughs> left Hawaii. I mean, left Los Angeles right after the riots. Oh, that's right. So about what year would have that been? Early that 90s. Was in uh, 93. Yeah. Because yeah. 94 was when I went to Pagosa and I think you guys might've already been there. Yeah. And we stayed in Pagosa for, Six or seven years, we, we did a lot of world travel during that time, a lot of time in West Africa and in, um, in Europe, studying African drumming and dance. Right. And what was your, um, the mentor's name that was the African drummer? Mamadi Keita. And he just died yeah. last year. He passed last Aww. year. And um, what, uh, that's a whole huge chapter. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, as we were there, we started to... Um, I wanted to get back into diving. And this was so, what happened is just extraordinary. We, um, we started to do a little bit of tropical travel. I got back to the ocean. And then I wanted to, uh, for some mid 40s birthday, I wanted to, I uh, <laughs> can't remember which one. But anyway, I wanted to dive the Santa Rosa Wall, Palancar Reef in Cozumel. Got myself wow. down there with him and his family, and I went diving, and he was not certified or anything like that. And uh, that was the re-entry into the underwater world, and that was a dream come true. Mm. And then he didn't want to stay on the beach while I was doing that. We found him a, a, a Discover Scuba. He got excited about it. And then we continued to take these trips every, you know, maybe twice a year. And continued with our education, not knowing I was going to become an instructor and an upper level PADI instructor, IDC staff instructor, wow. and uh, teaching instructors how to teach. So from my early um, experience with Dolphins Plus, where they give you the 45-minute rundown of how to really be with the dolphins, and my supervisory and how to like really enter into these areas and doing a lot of ceremony how to enter that ceremonial space. So I really took um, entering into the underwater world, took very seriously as a mom, caretaking people if I'm in that position. Because I came right. to it late. So I didn't come to, I came to it with a lot of maturity and um, I'm not sure if the word is gravity, but uh, sort of seriousness yeah. and how yeah. to really, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, the opportunities come to us and to be as present as possible with right. each opportunity. So nice. fast forward, I mean, it gets incredible. There's so much that has hap that happened. But anyway, we went on to um, then be living in Durango for about seven years, right? 
So I was really an hour from you in Pagosa. So that was more time there. But in that time, we were then instructors with scuba. So we oh, were. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, so we were bringing people to um, to the Yucatan to swim. To uh, that was our local diving. We'd go up to Denver and then go to Cozumel. So like I've got. 20, and some of the 30, dolphin 50. programs we did, we actually did in the Yucatan as well. So yeah. that was my kind of initial. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I'd be living in the Yucatan at some point. Uh huh. Uh, was pretty clear about that, and I'd kind of given up Hawaii at that point. Well, we wound up. Um, meeting people who had a dive operation in Fiji and my daughter entered college. So we went to Fiji to work at this dive operation. So we were going to do the South Pacific. We did. And then we met a a young Swedish couple who had opened, uh, he had sold a startup to Microsoft. He had this 63 foot swan. Ultimately they picked us up. We sailed all through like about near 5,000 nautical miles handling the scuba aspect on this boat. We had a compressor and we were taking the people he brings on board and his family to their next levels. Wow. That's amazing. We wound up then in a long story, but we wound up in Thailand teaching it, uh, uh, the Simlin in the Simlins, Simlin scuba adventures. The tsunami happened. Smack down the tsunami. We outran it on a motorcycle. Yes, lived, that's incredible. Lived through that. Tell it, stayed, tell it, Jan. Uh, stayed on at the uh, Tsunami Volunteer Center for three and a half months, helping get Kaolack, that was the town we were in, back up to speed. We lost everything. Everything yeah. was washed away. Everything. And you were yeah. just standing there and saw the tsunami coming, right? No, you... what happened was we had just got off the liveaboard because uh-huh. I was supposed to work at the dive shop. We had three dive shops, and that was the one they just finished the uh, the resort, and it was right on the beach, about four miles north of Kaulak proper. We get there, and they said, oh, no, you don't have to work today shift. So we went to get uh, a European cup of coffee. I had my shorts on and a tank top. You don't really run around in Thailand like that, but we were uh-huh. right on the coast. It was, right. you know, kind of right in the beach spot, beach area where it was okay. And then uh, we started to take this gorgeous drive. It was on Boxer Day, the day after Christmas. And then um, we needed to be between three places. He was going to give me a motorcycle lesson, which I, I'm standing over the bike and he's telling me how to clutch it. And then suddenly, Hair on the back of the neck stands up. We hear this roar. Something is happening. We look. He goes, we're out of here. Jumps on the bike. I jump on the back. We gun it. And I see the wave break the main road. I yell, um, flood. Now, we had only been working on the boat back and forth. So I hadn't didn't know understand a real topo map of exactly where we were. So I don't know if a dam broke. Or was it like some raging high tide moon, something or other? Well, what happened was the tsunami had hit Banda Acha wow. um, with the high wave. It, it, the water retreated where we were out and then it was coming in. But we were about an eighth of a mile from the coast, from the water proper, through an ironwood forest. So you don't see the water from where we were anyway wow. as the water broke the main road it had trees debris hotel roofing and everything it was just heinous we had no mm-hmm. idea what was happening so we we race up the side of the mountain now people are like ants cars and people running bruce stands at the top people want him to go farther inland but he doesn't want to go down so he's going to high roads And then the water had come over where we were. He saved us. Mm, Yeah. And the water eventually began to retreat. We work our way back down. And thank God you guys were able to respond. You know, you saw, you knew, you went, you know. And that in itself is a willingness to respond to your own instinct in the moment together. And we were trained as emergency first responders as well. Me too, so, multiple times. So yeah. training and that exactly what you're saying, that um, 
we were, you know, unified. We've been traveling around the world this way and the ability to respond to situations as opposed to react and yes. run like heck. We'd already been, we'd faced a lot of things, you know, in your life where you, you need courage. So that's one of the things I say, be brave. Life is like a cold shower. Be brave. <laughs> Remember Goldari? She, yes. That's her quote. Life that is, is like great. A cold shower. Be brave. Wow. Yeah, that's and especially really in these times, we really do need courage and bravery. Yeah, and, and she, those she had been, she was somebody mentioning her. She was somebody who'd been on Everest, like a mutual yeah. friend of ours. And actually, oh, yeah. her partner had died on Everest. Yeah, I mean, she did. knew life was like a cold shower. Be brave. Yeah, she has some really good bravery stories as well. Mm, yes. So we would sit in the springs in Pagosa, in these hot springs, these healing springs, which was a mecca for yes. um, Native peoples for, for centuries to heal and uh, speak. M amazing group of people had come to Pagosa during those times, writers, yes. you know, deep thinkers, adventurers, people healing. There was also anyway, a time when I was in the, um, <laughs> the closed hot springs on the other side of the street at the spa motel and um, a group of Ute Indians had come there and it was all these Ute women and they were all in there speaking Ute. And I just felt like I was in some other dimension. It was amazing. Um, a lot of really beautiful experiences. And, you know, they, it's said that the Native Americans used those springs for initiation. That was an activation place for them. And, and a um, place for, for tribes to come together and not fight, even if yes. they had some issues. Yeah, that was a place of Say something. I wanted to go farther, but that that okay. uh, cycle of coming back from the tsunami, living through it. So that was in uh, I'll think of it here in a second, 2004. So we, in 2005, I got back. My dad passed right then. Uh -huh. I got thirty five hundred dollars ultimately out of that whole process. And I was being leaned on physically to something was coming through and I needed to go do that. Bruce wanted to go on to Palau. I said, I got to do this. So there's a, quite a story to it, but I wound up committed and knowing I needed to come to Hawaii. <laughs> Finally, I wow. really grabbed that dream. So I, I come here and these 12 light beings came through in my artwork. So like channeling, but I, it was like channel artwork. It was like automatic writing, but it was automatic painting and then automatic nice. writing. So that was that has been a huge impetus and chapter. I, I came out with cards. I did it all myself, did all the graphics, did all the, you know, paid for it all, just chipping away. Wow. So I got into teaching scuba here. Bruce ended up coming. We taught scuba together. My daughter came. We taught scuba together. They all left. And I wound up working on dolphin boats. So who, oh, there's one more piece, but since um, about 2007 or eight, because the dive shop handled all the big, when there was big events coming and uh, the local sort of uh, dolphin operators needed to ha have a lot of people on, they'd rent the boats. I'd get to work on those. So I wound up working with a lot of small operators. And so that has been solid since you know, 2008. So that's I have had thousands and thousands of swim with the dolphins. That's amazing. And, and whales too, right? And whales. Yeah. And uh, that whole foundation of how to um, prepare people yeah. to um, settle. We're all in this together to, mm -hmm. to get into the field, into the space to notice. So the healings have been tremendous. What I have been yes. witness to and participate in. I've been involved for several years um, in the uh, volunteer whale disentanglement program that is mm -hmm. really very controlled with NOAA. So we don't get to jump in and, and uh, you know, cut away line or anything like that. It's done. We go through a whole protocol and then other people come in um, with these 20 foot long poles and knives on there to, after we've taken pictures and they've determined where to do the cuts and stuff mm. on the, on the line, you know, 
But right. uh, but we've certainly helped uh, disentangle dolphin and turtles and nice. So Beautiful. this is my home. I am so blessed. I cannot tell you. So I'm 68, 69 next month, mm -hmm. and still active. Yet Noah in 21 succeeded in stopping us from swimming with Hawaiian spinner dolphin. And that's been a very big issue. The community had been involved for a few decades in stating our case. You know, nobody's grabbing them. Nobody's really chasing them. There's been more and more people who come. Nobody's feeding them or not feeding them. And this whole uh, human dolphin experience and this field of, of helping people come and get, you know, bigger inside and bigger inside to be able to experience the field the dolphin set so that we can have that field within. Nice. So at this point, I'm writing a book and yes. bringing my artwork in that really addresses this field. Yes. Great. Jan, listen, I want to take a five minute station break. Mm. And um, if you can just mute yourself while we do that and there a little, a little video will go on and we have so much more, many more exciting questions to ask you and things to hear about. So just think about continuing this, talking about your book when we get back and we have a whole bunch of slides. Um, what amazing stories and adventures and, you know, not everybody would want to live the kind of life that you have or that I have. And I know that, <laughs> but the people who know me well, always say, Carrie, I know that this is really you and this is what you belong doing, you know? And I think some of us just came in to be adventurers of mind, heart and spirit and um, kind of our yob. And um, I just want to thank you for following your heart because you're, you know, you're amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. I'd like to, uh, my drive to get to come to Hawaii since I was little, I finally get it. It took a few years. I mean, just in the last few years, I finally get that uh, I've been living alone for four years right now and that I, I'm so happy and it feels right to get this time to really explore deeply myself. I'm really lucky to get to mine, you know, what's kind of going on in inside in my relationship to the ocean and the animals and to the people and how to like, what's the next level. So going through this uh, ending of my, basically my charter business, Dolphin Whispers Hawaii in so many words, another big transition was stopping us from swimming with the dolphin has given me an opportunity to write and to work more on my artwork again. Yeah, beautiful. And you raised a child. You had, I think I've had relationships and then I've maybe had eight years in between relationships where I was single and I wrote my books and, um, you know, different things. Um, so I think having that time to explore, I want to hear about your dolphin charter business. Uh, so uh, Dolphin Whispers Hawaii evolved out of getting to be on the different boats and uh, people coming to me and calling me and wanting to craft. We were involved in uh, uh, scuba diving, chartering around the world. So we were coming from like how to, to craft a great experience, the right operators to work with. And the fact that I got to work with so many operators in the harbor here in Kona, in Honokahau Harbor, I knew a particular group might enjoy a particular operator and their crew at the time. So I just began, I, I'd worked for a few other companies and then I just evolved my own. And I was working for, um, when I would do a group of six and under, I worked with Kit Kelly on the office for about 13 years. And uh, just this last year, he sold his boat. We'll see wow. what happens if he gets another one. So that was, um, a surprise. It was March 1st of last year. And so what years was that, that you, you did that? Well, I have, um, it in 22 is when 
the boat was finally sold. I, I have grandchildren now, so I put a little more, I continue to put in more time with the kids, maybe six weeks, two months, a couple times a, a year. And um, just began to sort of reassess, how do I continue this human dolphin experience? I don't like to let, to be sort of controlled out of something I've been building and developing. So this painting that's behind me, I realized yeah. I was in a grieving process. So this mm. is called free play. And it's this leaf game that the dolphins had taught us. Like you were talking about your seaweed story where you were throwing this right. around. Well, they'll, they'll play with leaves, these beautiful heart shaped leaves, mm. <laughs> a preference yellow. And um, I use them a lot in my artwork because it's this sense of play. And this mm. is the feel the dolphin set is nobody's touching anybody. I use uh, some nudity, you know, I like the backsides of people often. And it's really about being freed of any kind of um, oh, gosh. Restrictions. restriction. Yeah. And social conditioning and all that, you know, right. it's not about, you know, nudity per se, you know. Um, and in this fun piece, you know, it, it, anyway, it was profound peace for me. I, re, I got to pour in my grief into this piece because everybody, the dolphins and the people there are just in full, like kids. Right. Trying to get the dolph trying to get the leaves, trying to let go of the leaf. You catch a leaf, you let it go. You catch a leaf, you let it go. You play uh, volleys with the uh, keep away with the dolphins and, and mm -hmm. they will totally set the field as you well know. So yes. that's where this piece came from. And out of this, I realized it was time to write down these anecdotal stories. The um, what my unique perspective is, what is my unique perspective? So I'm in the mining process. I've got mm -hmm. a lot of dolphin art. I show at a lot of different places in Kona and have been doing commission art since I was in my really early 20s. Wow. And um so yeah, blessed, 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 blessed beyond mm. measure. And mm -hmm. um, and you do murals, and yeah, I know you did faux painting for a while. I mean, you still, really have still. Yeah. You have so many ways that you express your art. It's really beautiful. I just um, did for wonderful clients from Durango that had moved to Sedona, and I did a did area for them. And so I was just in. Pace in Arizona and did a 450 square foot mural for them in May mm -hmm. of this last year um, of an Aspen forest. I had Beautiful. elk right, you know, eight feet from me while I was working on this mural and it came out great. Wow. And um, so the artwork affords me the opportunity to go to different places still and uh, get to come back here. Yes. Do you have a website, Jan, if um, people wanted to reach you or, or any way they can contact you or we can. Oh, we can. I, during COVID, I took down the websites and everything that I had had carried for a long time mm -hmm. to rebuild them. And I, instead, I spent the eight months with my kids. So I did nothing. So mm -hmm. I have a Jan Salerno art and design on Facebook that I haven't been uploading to. You'll see. <laughs> but they could, maybe they could maybe oh, message God. you there, Jan Salerno, Art and Design. Yeah, we'll put or that Jan up. Salerno. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll put that up. Um, on the, I'll, I'll run a banner by in a little bit, and people can, if they want to stop it and get that, they can. Yeah, um, Jan Salerno would work. I'll, I'll catch it. Message, okay. Private message me. I will find it. So okay. I just did a charter. I've got five big charters this month. And uh, like 18 people, kind of big charters. And we're out with, it's humpback whale season. So we have calves and moms. And we lost track at about 30 breaches this last week. And uh, uh, sorry, about at least 15 whales. We're the southernmost part of the humpback whale sanctuary. Mm. So there's more in Maui, but we still have, you know, tremendous. Just off my, I'm about 360 steps to the water. And they're right off here on occasion. Dolphins mm. come by. Yeah, it's really good. And do and you go out and jump whales. in with them? Or do you... Not humpbacks. No, okay. they're, 
an endangered species and they're federally protected. We're in a humpback whale sanctuary and in a marine mammal sanctuary. But we've been in with sperm whale. Uh, we just had melon headed whale the other day that um, mm. my boat didn't see, so we didn't go in with. Um, we had a whale shark right off the fish farm. And we, that's a fish, but we often have them here. And uh, it's a needle in a haystack. And when you get lucky to be with one of those size of a bus fish, right? it's a benign plankton eater. Oh my gosh. Incredible. Yeah. Well, shall we look at your slides? I have about a thousand more questions I'd like to ask you um, ask because me, obviously me. you're part of a community. You're part of a community who communicate with each other about yeah your um, marine mammal sanctuary there about what's going on with the different dolphins and whales who's seen what what's going on i know you have legalities that are um attempting to be changed right now and i think we should talk about that are you okay with going on another 45 minutes or so oh absolutely okay because we can continue um but let's put the slides up and maybe as we are going through those we can um, stimulate some conversation. <laughs> yeah, we can just have different conversations, but I'd like to include kind of what you are knowing about what's going on, how you guys communicate with each other and interact in that environment. I've been, um, do you know who Sierra Goodman is down in Costa Rica? Yes, I do. And she actually, I've been out on a boat with her several years ago and she takes people out to be with dolphins, but she also was really instrumental in getting that Drake Bay to become a marine mammal sanctuary. And um, the, there's a guy who built uh, further North along the coast there. Um, my friend Alexander is in Uvita and other friends took me to a place really beautiful kind of eco hotel right on the water that a guy had built probably 30 years ago. And he was identifying all the whales that were coming by there by being able to pick out some characteristic on them. And he could say, that's this whale. And yeah. oh, we see it again this year. Yeah. And um, he made some really complete report and gave it to the Costa Rican government, and they said, oh, well, you know, you don't have a degree in this, so you can't really tell us this, which was silliness. But eventually, the work he had done got accepted, and they began realizing that these same whales were coming back, and they did turn this one big area into a marine mammal sanctuary. So that's really cool. So things like that that you know about Hawaii and um I guess just share as we go along. Obviously, this is one of your beautiful paintings, and um, just go ahead and yeah. I want to speak. To, I want to speak to this one. This is uh, a healing piece, healing the water. Those are mm. uh, with Dr. Masuro Omoto's work around healing uh, crystals. Right, water mm. being being um, sorry, water being frozen to a particular uh, idea. Right. On, on here is this, uh, David Sarita took his work and uh, was freezing water to the sounds of the planets. And he did one to the sound of the sun, which he said was the perfect matrix for water. So the one that's just above the golden healing ball off to the upper left, um, that one is one that I use a lot in my artwork. So nice. it's representing a... a um, the, the prayer for the healing of the waters on the planet. And nice. um, so that's what's going on there. And under that, there's prayers written on this piece. But I have a whole series of these healing pieces. <laughs> nice. And we and um, that's another thing that I do with my plasma, my GANs and my plasma materials is I set them over a glass of water in the freezer and you can see the field emerge Um in the ice, which is really beautiful too. It's a, it's a great medium and the water shows that we're all connected and the waters are all connected. The water above, the water below, the water in the air, the water in us, the water in the seas. I agree. This is um, <laughs> just a, a lot of my pieces at a little uh, a sale. 
I have I greeting it. cards and there's so many different images of um, uh, you know, whale eye and, and my goddess council. Those were the 12 light beings that came through. And there's this Kuan Yin that I was in Malaysia on the way to uh, Thailand and got, there was about a 50, 70 foot Kuan Yin patron saint of the seas. I had just got off the 5,000 nautical mile sail. Mm, amazing. Getting chills again. Violet flame of transmutation. Beautiful. With a little DNA activation in there, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So St. Germain, it's a prayer I work with every day is to um, transmute, transmute, transmute any and all negative energies to love and uh, yes. within myself and you know, before I get on the boat and work with people, always, always, always to pray for everyone on the boat for protection and for clarity and for to remove any, uh, you know, edgy, edginess and all that so that we can just be together. So I do, a, you know, spiritual hygiene. Beautiful. And we do the same. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe that that's the way that we change the world is by holding love for all situations, love, gratitude peace yes transmutation and intention. well and so that we can be available for what's up yes yeah too also i love this this is a big uh octopus i did for one of the local operators i've been working a lot with who was a uh, captain this is uh his name is danny scott and uh, kona ocean adventures is who i um, am working with and uh, they have three boats. I'm an affiliate now. So if you book and say, Jan Salerno sent you, I get a little bit of a little bakshish. That's <laughs> nice. But man. anyway, Danny and I work together so much. And, and uh, we've, we've had three charters this month. So, and we've got a few more too. Yeah. Nice. And he loves octopus. Nice. <laughs> That's a big, big piece. That's about four feet wide. Gorgeous. Really gorgeous. And, you know, people eat octopus, right? Yeah, I'm. They're really, they're really <laughs> smart. They're oh, super smart, so and awesome. they shouldn't be eaten. I just want to say that <laughs> they can get out of mazes, you know, and they are brilliant animals. Um, here, yes. some of our dive uh, guides will dive down and bring one up, and so that people get to feel them and touch them and just get get to realize who wow. they are. You know, there's that fine line between messing with things and also the tactile getting to know something so that you don't really want to eat it or to be afraid of it. Right. So, right. Yeah. And getting Tuckle rid of fear. Is the, uh, yeah. One of the names of nice. octopus here. There's you. Yeah. On the boat. <laughs> beautiful. Getting ready for a beautiful morning. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That was the boat I worked. That's Kit Kelly there with the hat on in the middle. So that was captain. Yeah. Nice. No, I'm lying. He's in the, uh, he's right at the helm. He's the guy in the back with the blue t-shirt on. That's kid. Nice. kid. We have had so much fun. Oh, speaking of Harmony. So Harmony's mom is Roberta Goodman and she and Kit have worked together for years and years and had worked mm. together. And I started working with Roberta and Kit and, uh, and then Roberta, went off to do some other things and work in some other ways and continue to work with Kit as well as I stayed more steady with him. Nice. And Roberta had some, there were some things that came to us through Roberta at our dolphin camps back in the nineties, eighties. Yeah. And, and she was John Lilly's head of research for yes. um, 10 years and Harmony is her daughter. And yes. um, she, Oh, speaking of Roberta is uh, she's been this this last year, she was with the Spotted Dolphins in Bimini doing that, leading trips there. And we're, she's working with Lori Anderson, Lori Rayon, Rayon and Puda. And she is doing a trip in latter uh, September, October to Morea to swim with the whales. Mm, so, neat. Yeah. We had a famous video that came from her, I think, that was a, I can't remember, if, I think it was a baby whale either being born or right after it was born. And um, and that's a rare piece of footage because people yes. haven't gotten that birth process. Oh my gosh, yeah. I have so many good little stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So cool. You've seen a lot of births out there? I 
I was, had just got back from my daughter's first birth. I'd been mm-hmm. there, at, you know, for six weeks longer. I had been there during the whole process, supporting her beforehand for, for a month. I get back the next day. I have a charter and there I am. We get in the water. I'm waiting for my people to get off the boat. I'm right there at the back of the boat and I turn and we're together and there goes by. I'm looking and there's a dolphin who comes within like two feet of me. Like that's really close. And on the inside and she was turned and she had, she was giving birth right in that moment. The tail wow. was out up to the peduncle of the, the baby dolphin. And it was like, this is, they show me, you, you've you been all wrapped up in birth for the last few months here. I'll show yeah. you birth. Exactly. This is what we, they do. That's yep. so many of the stories are like that. They'll show you something that they know about you, about my clients who are on the boat. How and you had the know? birth vibe going on. Birth vibe. And she got sonar and she's like, I'm done. And she gets back on the boat. That's all she needed. So, yeah, they're super uh, vibrationally quick, intelligent. Too. Yeah. Uh, so on Facebook, Jan, is it Jan Salerno Art? Um, I've got a few pages, but Jan Salerno. Okay. And then Jan Salerno Art and Design. So this picture right here is of Bob Gladden. <laughs> And we have been in, in a group called Whale RN, which has been the local volunteer community um, training to um, do the whale disentanglement. So there's been years of trainings and, uh, you know, sometimes ragtag and then very precise and, um, you know, holding space for if we get a call for an entangled whale. So there's a few pictures mm. here of, of what was going on with a uh, local group, how it looks, you know, it's not really nice. elegant, but it's getting out there, you know, monthly and doing the trainings. And um, uh, one of these pictures, you see Bob pulling a, uh, uh, sorry, a plywood tail. Yeah. Mm. So that we They're can not really. Ourselves. In super order, probably, but we'll just talk about yeah, it as they Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And this, mm-hmm. and this is uh, one of the Goddess Council pieces. The second I one. I love this, is, this. It's fabulous. Oh, my is, gosh. And look at those Oceania. dolphins around her head. Yeah. Oceanus right here. Right. And they all come in to, you know, to the third eye, to the pineal gland. Yes. And uh, it's about communication, which we know, and, and the field that they set in communication. So that is the work, the field. That Deep is really work, right? neat. Yes. Mm-hmm. Fabulous. What's her name? Oceanus. Oceanus. Yes. So that we were in a Christmas parade here, but you can see this is how some of the training is done. That would be pulled by the boat that was shown earlier in the water, trailing some debris. Then Mm. we come alongside, imagining it's a whale, throw a grappling hook type thing, not at the whale per se, into the debris that he might be carrying. So these whales come down 2,500 miles. They migrate every year and then go back for, you know, a Hawaii honeymoon and to calve. But they might be carrying crab traps debris that they've carried wow. that long and then that can cut through pectoral fins or be caught mm. in their mouth or absolutely detain them or uh, make it impossible to to go down if they're carrying a lot of flow. so um what is noaa jan what do those letters stand for <laughs> national oceanic administration uh-huh it's kind of an official government yeah yeah Um, You know, it's a very cellular, compartmentalized, giant organization. I was on, we were on a charter. We heard that there was a big meeting happening in Hilo, which is two and a half hour drive. We get in from the harbor, from our, get our clients in. I just jump over the mountain and get into Hilo. And I've got my chart, my posters for the humpback whale sanctuary and the marine mammal sanctuary. And there I'm standing in front, like six feet away, four feet away from the head of the Pacific fleet. 
It's like a Star Trek guy, like Captain Picard. And he's wearing his whites with all of his medals. Sure. I mean, the poster up. And I'm saying, you know, what are you doing using sonar in these are two sanctuaries. All that it takes to get a sanctuary created. If you need to use sonar, you know, go someplace else. How about that? I said it eloquently and certainly not <laughs> in that way. But there was a, I had an opportunity to stand before the public at that for a three minute, um, very well crafted spiel. That's the problem. I went to each kiosk before I, I spoke and each one of these lovely young NOAA scientists, you know, were, were telling their aspect of what this was all about. What it was about was Na NOAA was sanctioning the use of sonar again by the Navy in this area. And at the same time, NOAA was fighting us to be able to swim with the dolphin. Mm. And they later succeeded a couple years later. And each one of these NOAA scientists, I waited till they finished their spiel. Very nice people. You know, they probably have house payments and they have children and they have car and all these things. They had no idea that on this side of the island that, that we were being thwarted by NOAA and in fact harassed to not swim or interact in any kind of way, even love the dolphins. They don't want us in the water now. You have to be 50 yards away. There's tickets, $1,000. There's harassment that NOAA will come in at, or DLNR will come in um, and NOAA. You know, high speed, high speed. Right, so they're and then disrupting their, what they're oh, trying yeah, to do. Oh, yeah, and then with their, um, what do you call those? Uh, a microphone yelling at people tourists who might have been paddleboarding along and they see the dolphins and they're like, oh, you know, and then, yeah, it's, it's so very interesting and um, tragic. We'll see. In the last two weeks, they just disentangled one. We didn't have any last year or the year before. Uh, two years before that, I had one, I'm looking over the side of the boat and out of the blue, one goes by and it's trailing a bunch of debris. And I'm like, am I seeing this? Did I create mm. this because we're in the, the whale disentanglement group? We hadn't heard about it. So we stayed with this whale, went through the protocol, got people to get out, tracked this guy all the way around the south part of our island, went up to Maui, and then he was disentangled. Mm. And they, do they kind of wait around and allow you to disentangle them? Um. Not necessarily. Sometimes part of the disentanglement process is that on that debris they're carrying, they'll they'll add floats so that hopefully the the whale won't descend too much to get away. But mm. we also put a tracker that will break free after two weeks. Mm. And so then then they're tracked from Maui and then they can rendezvous with them. That's amazing. Amazing, amazing. Well, this I'm thankful for what you can do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, who's this gorgeous this, being? This is Leah. She's one of the goddess council. And um, there's waves and waves of, of love are um, coming through here. Just, just being infinite love like the ocean, lapping, 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 lapping. And waves. so you did 12 of these, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where are they at this point? They, I have a deck of cards that I share. Um, they've been selling. They were in Durango for a long time. They're here in Kona. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Nice. Yeah, deck of cards Beautiful. Yeah. And, Where can um, people get your cards? Oh, boy. Right now, um, you can get a hold of me and I can send them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Great. The, the originals were in... Um, Durango for a long time they were there was a, a shop on Main Street that they were up you know as holding space they're very large how sweet yeah. awesome I, there's nice shops in Durango too very nice yeah uh -huh. this is a painting from behind you oh look at that and all the little yellow leaves we yeah. can see them now and there's a prayer on there and and uh, so I get channeled messages you know that I often write within the water of, of artwork so that, and it comes through spontaneous. And if it, if something comes through, I get it. Nice. Yeah. This one um, I did after seeing um, The Cove, which is that movie about the um, dolphins and cetacea that are 
corralled into this cove in Taiji, Japan. Yes. And then some are chosen to be in captive situations and the rest are brutally murdered. Bludgeoned. Yes. And Rick so, O'Berry kind of made this. Didn't Rick O'Berry put that film together? He's been he did. Rick, Rick O'Berry trained the original flipper and he has been a dolphin activist the whole rest of his life. Yeah. And um, um Roberta has a, a a very, you know, telling story about Rick O'Berry and she was responsible for bringing she uh, physically went with Joe and Rosie, the dolphins that John Lilly had in the right. um, Bay Area to bring them to the Dolphin Research Center. And then Rick O'Berry and people got involved and she was banned from seeing those dolphins again. Yeah. yeah. You know, none of it's perfect. I think everybody's <laughs> just doing their best, obviously, right? They're doing it, right? Yeah. So this golden healing ball is about healing and it's about just bringing... Uh, consciousness and presence and healing to these situations. And this is beautiful to show pass. Yeah. I'd like to hold that in my consciousness with it as well. Yeah. This too shall pass. That's the thing. This too shall pass. So, yeah. The, yeah. And this is one of the boats I've been working on lately. And um, this is a humpback um, nearby. And uh, this is the alluvial fan of Hualalai. And this is what it looks like off of the, the West. Uh, this is off Kona. I smile Gorgeous. because it's just magic. We have so many kinds of whales and dolphins. We have Hawaiian spinner dolphins, spotted dolphin, bottlenose, risos, cuviers, Blainesville, pilot whales, melon-headed whales, sperm whale, dwarf pygmy whale, uh, pygmy sperm whale, occasionally orca. Wow. Say whale. Oh my god. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, and more. I can't think of more. Um, this is off the bow um with a hualalai in the background. So you're facing east and uh, there's whales right there. Nice. There. Yeah, these pictures so, were really small, so when I stretched them out, they're a little bit blurry, yeah. but I think they're yeah. good. You can get the idea. Yeah. And we're to not come right up onto a whale, but we'll set and the whale will come over at times. Of course. Come They're coming over, over to say hello, right? Yeah. Yeah. To visit yeah. and to look, you know, right up at the people. Yes. All my longtime experiences, they want to interact with us. They do. There's so much there. There's another one here. You have to tell us what this is, because what are we seeing? The We're seeing the the stern of the boat and the ladder. So that's just the ladder and the engine. But there's a whale right there. I what just, part of the whale are we seeing? Like We're the... seeing his back and his okay. dorsal fin. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, and it's a humpback. humpback. Nice. Again, again. Nice. Doubles. Doubles. Double, yeah. Yeah. Double again, I this think. This is one day. Okay, here's a whale shark. Whale shark. Whale shark, amazing whale and shark. beautiful. Yeah, so I'm not... beautiful. They're so yeah. surprising to to see one, and the their nose is blunt, and their mouth is about three four feet wide, and their eyes wow. are on the side. Wow. <laughs> and uh, they're just so soft. So um, gentle beings, very gentle. I'm very curious about people. They like to come up to the holes and rub on the holes of the boat. Nice. And, uh, they'll stay around mm -hmm. all day. Solitary Beautiful. creature. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a spy hop from a whale. Humpback. Cute, 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 cute. And spy hop, for those who are not familiar with the term, just means the whale's coming straight up to kind of look at you. Yeah. And they might turn, off. pivot a little bit, look at you around. And then yeah. come down. They might do that with their tail straight up. When they're the singers will come up, will hang upside down with their tail up. And I've seen singers be with the water level up their peduncle, like their ankle. Wow. And that is just the tail is just like this while they sing for 20 minutes. That's amazing. 
And that is reverberating the boat and you can hear it on the surface. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. That is a whale shark. They Beautiful. come in all sizes. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. They get to be about as big as a school bus. Hammerheads. Yeah. We have um, on occasion, uh, seasonally, we have hammerheads come in and they're not, I mean, you're safe swimming with them. Yeah. Okay, I want to bring up this topic, which is kind of sad, but dolphin deaths. And um, because of the fishing industry, and this is me with a dolphin that we found on a beach where we are at the moment. And um, you and I looked at the pictures of this dolphin. We were wondering it might be a, a slightly um, interbred of a couple of different kinds of dolphins because of it's dark and it has a long narrow snout. And then really the next picture, this is another dolphin we found a couple of weeks later. And, um, his dorsal is gone. Uh-huh. So we see fishing boats, um, shrimpers all the time. Uh, and there are pongas that go out. And my thought is, I mean, I've always known that dolphins were endangered by the fishing industry. And I guess I'd just like to hear more about that from you. And what I was taught years ago was to always buy yellowfin tuna because it's line caught. If you're going to get tuna in the grocery store, I don't know if that's 100% true. Um, I think some boats always used to be at least when we were doing this, they would be flagged um, like some of the boats would be flagged out of Taiwan. So they didn't have to follow the Marine Mammal Protection Act. Um, some of the people here, there's uh, we're currently on the Sea of Cortez and which is a big, um, big fishing area, but it's also a big marine mammal area. So I guess I'm curious what your thoughts are on the subject, how we can be more active to help change this and how many people really realize that dolphins and whales both are air breathing mammals. And if they get caught in a net, the likelihood is that they're going to die. And um, nobody's going to take one of these in as a fishing boat because it's illegal, but they're going to get thrown back into the water. And what are your thoughts? Well, I think it's a, it's a tragedy. There is so yes. much bycatch by the commercial fishing industry. And what do you um, mean by catch? Well, they may be going for a different kind of fish. Um, and they, <clears throat> for example, some of the <laughs> fishing practices scrape the bottom of the sea for a particular kind of fish. I'm vegan, so I'm a little off like exactly what kind of fish and kind of thing they're looking for at different times. I don't know the exact line and the nets and all that. But certainly our marine mammals are susceptible to getting caught in the nets. Right. Um, Ralph and I were working on a book, Dream of the Golden Dolphin, back when, where we wanted to, um, back in the early 80s, where part of the story was, spinning a metal thread into the nets so that the dolphins could see it with their sonar. Mm. I don't think that's such a great idea in retrospect mm. because of, you know, wanting to be able to cut away the nets, you know, maybe a, a micro thread could still work out, but it is a problem, you know, um, just mm -hmm. the, the sheer number. There's a book called uh, cod. It was a New York Times bestseller that came out in the early 2000s. And it's a tall, thin book. And it, what's in it, every few pages is a recipe for cod. But it starts in the, around 800 AD. And it has all of these captain's logs of how, the cod and the kind of fish. And it goes all the way through the centuries. It's extraordinary. So you really do grasp a feel of how into the 60s, 70s, 80s, and then the size of the fleets, the fishing fleets became so much more, and the technology became so much more than sustainable. 
So this has been now some decades of an unsustainability issue. And if we went back to a little different practices, you know, continuing consciousness around not catching, um, uh, about avoiding bycatch. I mean, at the same time, the Navy, you know, is, has sanctioned, uh, sorry, no, has sanctioned a 0 0.027 something for some uh, take on, on marine mammals with the Navy sonar. So where they're, they're saying they're touting stewardship, sacred stewardship, there is still, you know, in other areas, just a massive um, tragedy of, you know, a lot of death. So mm -hmm. where we are, you know, act locally. Right. And uh, research these issues. I mean, we can look at a dolphin safe can of tuna, but is it really? You Correct. Know, because of the lobbies yeah. and people can buy the, um, there's been some movies out lately or documentaries lately where you can buy the stamp as mm -hmm. a, as an industry that yeah. says it's dolphin safe if you support something or other. So we are in very strange times in that way. Um, and here for you, there's also viruses that are going on in the, in the cetacean community. So I think that, you know, we're in the middle of great change and we want to hold the, the, uh, safety and uh, protection of the, the species. Um, right. The um, it's interesting. There's a couple of thoughts that I have. And one is um, another thing we were told here is the, what are the, the porpoises? Vikita. The, the Vikita yeah. porpoise. Yeah. Vikita. And they um, have something inside them that the Chinese think is an aphrodisiac or something in not Chinese. The, not the Vikita porpoise. Not the Vikita? It's, it's the toothfish that okay. they are poaching. It's for the swim bladder. Okay. And a swim bladder is in the, in the, you know, tens of thousands of dollars worth that much. And the Vikita are near them. And ah. they're not supposed to catch these. Um, because there's again, a moratorium on them, but the poachers and a uh, poor fisherman, you know, getting one, two or three, or, you know, it's like a cartel, right? you know, and the Vikita, there's like nine, 10, eight, nine, 10 of them total left in the Sea of Cortez. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're uh, at witnessing the possible full extinction because of poverty. Right. And, Yes. And so I come back to, I guess, where I've come with kind of everything in life. And it's because of what I wrote in my books um, from the ancient Aramaic. Um, when we shift our neurobiology, we actually shift what we're holding in creation around us. And when we breathe, smile, and hold love and gratitude and stay in that state, we literally, and if everybody on the planet was doing that, we move into the golden age where there is no death, there is no destruction because every single person is acting with love, with gratitude, with peace, with presence, with awareness. Like you said, coming up with solutions that make all things possible. And really after five decades of being vegan, vegetarian, we actually just started um, keto recently because of certain health issues. And after four weeks of that, those health issues are starting to clear up. And I, I'm eating seafood and I, um, you know, I have this conflict in myself because I know that it's harming these creatures that I care about. And, um, and I'm choosing to do it for the moment. Um, it's probably not for my whole life, but, um, you know, I, totally I know, it. yeah. And I know that we, we need to breathe, smile, and love. We need to hold the space of altering the civilization from the joy, the presence with inside each of us. And as we each do it, we activate others. Pod love. Yeah. Pod love. Yeah, I um, finally did, eight years ago, did vegan. 
I'd been a vegetarian most of my entire for since I was 18. And um, I wanted to see what it was like to not be in the vibration of a slave society. Yes. Because what we eat are, you know, uh, you know, my holdout was my half and half for my coffee or my tea. Right? Uh huh. And um, so having done that, you know, there, what's come out in the world is we understand so much more about how, you know, how this society is slaved. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes. And um, so that even those who think they are understanding. free. Yeah, that and yeah. understanding. So we we have the opportunity to play with those vibrations and play. So maybe not consume that, see what that's like. If our body needs something, we can choose to, to do that. I live in Hawaii and I haven't been eating fish. I mean, yeah. and it's like, oh my gosh, people are handing me fish at, you know, at the, at the dock all the time, you know, it's right. like, thank you. No, but I, I may, I may. Um, mm -hmm. But right now, no, but you know that if you were, you wouldn't catch a fish, you know, you want to be able to take care of yourself to be able yes. to eat if you have to. You yeah. could be a breatharian too. True. So true that. Yeah. So was um, this your license plate or somebody else's? No, it was one I just saw and I took a picture of it. I love it. Because I just great. loved it, you know, and That's it's like, oh, I've done so many seminars with wonderful people, Sean Galloway, Dr. Sam Byrne, behavioral optometrist, Sean Galloway, a musician, dolphin, uh, dolphin tunes, where we're um, writing songs and working with music and creating the field in a, in a pod consciousness together to go nice. out and then experience pod consciousness with the dolphins and to help people who are really non swimmers or um, pretty tenuous in the water to feel like really supported. Right. So it just, you know, the water is so healing. It helps open up all those areas. And if we know we're going in together, we're like kids, you know, we'll, we'll do this together. This was off yeah. the coast of California on Stuart Royston's boat. Oh, nice. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I see his dolphin pictures a lot. It's one of your paintings, right? Yeah. I was in the uh, Sea of Cortez with my daughter teaching her advanced diving. And um, we saw something out on the water. My daughter did. We got the captain to go out there. It was a pot of whales. I got my pink fins. I go, can I go in? I'm in the water, you know, and I'm right. Oh, Do you oh, wear those I, really long fins? I didn't. Oh. And um, these were pink Mars fins. And I uh, get in the water and I getting uh, there's the there was a plankton bloom. The viz wasn't there. I'm getting close. Now I'm about six, eight feet from the, the whale and I'm getting caught in the draft. And it's wow. like, whoa, I don't want to to do that. And I yeah. head it up. I'm swimming with them. And I just learned mm -hmm. the Gayatri. So I'm doing a real strong side stroke singing mm. the Gayatri. And I'm hearing Beautiful. all these clicks and whistles click. They liked it. Well, before you know it, the pod moved. I missed the signal. I'm in the center of the pod. And I, th and I think, oh, my gosh, my daughter's on the boat. I think this is the, probably the stupidest thing I've ever done. I'm in the middle of a pod of 27 sperm whale. Wow. Well, I didn't know what kind of whale they were yet until I saw this little baby face with a smile and I could see the teeth. And it's uh -huh. like, oh, oh, this is quite a while ago. So I'm, I uh, continue to swim and I look back and then I see two whales coming towards me and I've got whales on either side of me. I'm in the middle and I turn over and I've got my hands in prayer and I'm singing the Gayatri through my snorkel louder than I hope my heart. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get pinched, you know, my eyes are going to bulge and I'm going to explode, right? Uh, it's not going to be pretty. You know, and I'm singing the Gayatri and the two whales came right under me. So if I had reached out that far and stood, I could be on whales. I was in a tube of whales. They wow. just kept, kept going. And they must have loved I, the Gayatri like, mantra. Oh my gosh. I'm hearing these clicks and whistles. And at some point, I'm kind of, I miss the signal again, and I'm on the outside. I swim back. Now, when I had first swum up, I realized that felt like an aggressive move. So I started swimming up. So I never touched them, but the draft was pulling me close. But mm. they never touched me. There was another, one other gentleman on the boat who went, he went off the back of the boat and went right to the pod. And he got whipped around on the tail and he had an aggressive situation. He was freaked. I didn't know anything about this. Uh -huh. I get back 
I'm calling the cheeky English, you know, manager of the dive shop going, Luke, Luke, come on. You know, it's like, Woo. and he had been out there and he said, yeah, there's a big granddaddy chased them back on the boat and there was all this blood in the water. They just had a birth. So they allowed wow. me in right before that baby was born. So this is wow. trust. This yes. is the piece that represents trust. Beautiful. I didn't Beautiful. think about it, but just going for it. You know, that's these days I'm a little more thoughtful like that. Yeah. I have total <laughs> chills. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is a, a spotted dolphin. Yeah. And um, this is, a, is this a mural? This is, I did not paint this. This was a, uh -huh. a gentleman I was doing a mural for. Uh -huh. He had seen this ad I had done and he fooled around and created it on a brick wall as if it was a mural. He was just oh, being cute, an older uh, cute. European guy. But, cute. But uh, yeah. That's me. Is that a painting or a photo? It's a photo, but it's also a, um, we, we swim through bubble rings, but, um, wow. are those what bubble I've, rings from the whales? These are bubble rings from a diver underneath, but what I've done, it's a composite. So you can see people on the surface, uh -huh. they're snorkeling, they're looking down. And, um, actually it was one bubble ring and I repeated the picture, you know, and cute. photoshopped it. So it looks like I was going through a, yeah, very cute. A, I an love ad it. for my work. Nice, very nice. Um, spinner dolphin. And yeah, poster yeah, you fun. made, or yeah, yeah, just a little ad piece of ad work for the nice. Yeah. This piece is called Kona Paradise, and it's one of my paintings. And there's all these local fish here. And you can see the bottlenose up here and there's spinners and there's the leaf game happening and you can see divers and you can see, you know, the mantas. We have a, a well over 200 some odd mantas that have all been ID'd. So their underside is like a Dalmatian, but it's unique, like a whale's tail is unique. So wow. um, they all have names. Mm, I love swinging, uh, swimming with uh, manta rays. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of the mantas, um, we, uh, Keller Laros and the Manta Pacific Foundation. So people from our dive shop and um, went to a lot of effort back and forth to Oahu and got our mantas protected statewide. Mm. People have been swimming with their like big birth. Some of them are 30 years old plus. Wow. So yeah, it's quite a thing. Well, Beautiful. now Noah is uh, focusing on our mantas. So they are working on regulating that. This piece I did quite a long time ago when I was in Pagosa. And this mm -hmm. was reaching down. It's called Retrieving the Bones or Retrieval. And she's she's down in the sea bottom and she's picked up her sp a spine bone. She's mm -hmm. looking at it. And it's like finding our, our strength. And this nice. light rays coming through is representing all the light language. And there's six dolphins swimming around her representing the ancestors. Temple nice. of the Sun from Palenque is in there. And nice. Uh, I've knew? been to Palenque. Yeah. Who knew? Beautiful. Me too. Uh, I wanted to say one more thing. And it's, I was kind of leading into the story of like, who knew in my later life I'd get to be doing all this dolphin work, even though I was passionate younger. So I'm back from the tsunami. I'm like, you know, PTSD. My sister-in-law was a homeopath at the time. She does a sesh with my husband. She does a, a long session with me, determines what remedy, um, uh, constitutional remedy she wants to give me. She doesn't tell me what it is. She gets a hold of it, sends it to me, take it. And if you know about homeopathy, you take right. maybe one dose and it's done. Yeah. So months later, she says, would you like to know what that was? And I said, Sure. And she tells me, and I just burst into tears. She says, dolphin's mother's milk. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember through Pagosa, there was a lot of the wolf milk was going around. Right. You know, yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 The homeopathy. So yep. that's very interesting. These um, very nurturing, these um, uh, homeopathic milk remedies. 
Mm. Anyway, dolphins money stuff? Are you kidding? And then I get yeah. like 19 years of dolphin, you know? Right. Perfect. Yeah. Perfecto. Hawaiian spinner dolphins. Gorgeous. Playful, you know, on the bow of the boat with us. We have, So we have 750 to 1,000 along the Kona Coast here. And they mm. break up into about four pods and then about 3,000 around the island total. They don't leave. Um, the DNA of the Hawaiian spinner dolphin, there's five different DNA sets. Mm. Uh, Big Island has one set. That being said, in the last several years, some years, they've been um, mating with the spotted dolphin. These right. guys are nocturnal feeders. The spotted dolphin are um, opportunistic feeders. Mm -hmm. The spotted dolphin migrate. These guys don't. At, at such a time of great change, these guys have changed up their DNA a little bit. They've expanded their horizons a little bit. Isn't interesting. that interesting? Yes. And so now um, they are, they're sexually mature about seven years. So we had been waiting to see if these hybrids um, would have babies. Would have babies. And what's interesting is that they exhibit both behaviors. The spotted dolphin will, will leap sort of double high, but they mm -hmm. don't spin, spin or spin, things like that. It's very And what we used to see um, in the Keys when we were with Ron Canning, he would talk about the, there were local pods and then there were traveling pods. And usually the traveling pods tended to be young males so that they would be seeding with different DNA so the local pods weren't just interbreeding. So it was bringing yeah. in um, outside DNA. Really cool. Very beautiful, natural um, survival selection. Right. Spinners. Yeah. Spinner dolphin. Gorgeous. So we all have some friends. Here's a humpback. Um, some spinner friends who recognize us and will come around. Oh, you're in the water again today. Hi. And they'll come nice. over and blow bubbles and... Maybe Beautiful. spin around you and uh, swim alongside for a while. Nice. Yeah, there you are again. And so you're writing a book of your memoirs on this uh, dolphin journey, yeah. sea woman journey, the challenges I, of the system and the wild. You know, I wanted to, to bring my artwork in. I wanted to bring in the beauty of the experience. I'm not sure how much of the conflict or this situation I'm going to bring in. I'm just writing right now these anecdotal healing stories. I, I'm feeling like I'd like each piece of art to have almost like a Hawaiian chant, but in English, almost in uh -huh. iambic pentameter, a piece that represents what it's saying, even if it's like a haiku or something. So right nice. now I'm just seeding, or I'm priming the pump. I'm just writing, 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 and see what comes out. These are our spotted dolphins. They have a, a white beacon. Cute. And they're a lot bigger. This is just representing all the lines that can be wrapped around um, our whales. That's right? amazing. Yeah. Mm. Different Bless things. your heart kind for of helping with that. This is one of my pieces. I do a lot of murals around town. Jack's Diving Locker has had a few of my murals. I painted this last year. I painted three um, uh, tiger sharks on this piece. And I wound up um, the, the next day I was in the water smack dab with a, a tiger shark. See, yeah, it's it such, really, such mm. a creation world that we're living in, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Vibrational and I think that's creation. really a big part of it. So, so wanting to stay in the light form of things rather than in the conflict. Yes. We don't want to yes. sustain the conflict. We want to recognize that and and move beyond it and move, move into love it. and go, this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. Breathe and smile. See the wholeness and the joy in all things. See the play and the delight. Yeah. And the things that catalyze. Maybe that catalyze, maybe the conflict catalyzes some more consciousness. Yes. Or some more thought about uh, the ramifications of our actions. Or if, yes. we, yeah, if we brought more um, yeah, awareness to a situation. Yes. Or, or that's the thing when something is really big, it can lose, uh, yeah, it can lose sight of what's really happening. That's another 
piece of a mural. It's a gorgeous turtle. Wow. Just gorgeous. I think that's it. That is it. Okay. So thank you so much, Jan. This has been fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank this you. has really been fun and beautiful and wonderful. And maybe we can talk about our Colorado adventures or who knows. Or I'd love to hear. Do you have old photos from your drumming days? Yes, I do. That would be a wonderful <laughs> thing to talk yes. about too. Yes. Really great yes. stuff. Keep just being the fabulous shining light that you are. Thank you. And you as well. Thank you so much Thank for you. this forum and for um, your your beautiful work. And you are on the, the front end of the wave, hanging 10. <laughs> Thank you. Hanging 10, Thank that's you. right. Hanging 10, right? Yes. You are like on the, love it. as forward as it gets. Thank you. And all the people that watch this can think of you out there in Hawaii, in the land of the cetaceans. Get a hold of me. Yeah. And you can contact her on Facebook, Jan Salerno. And um, so much love, and we'll see you all soon. Okay. Blessings. Adios. Ciao. And if you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are, whoa, now, child, please don't frown. You can choose a new vibration and you far. I am a 21st century superhuman. And I know that the answers are inside. I am a 21st century superhuman.